guys welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be a little bit different it's going to be a little more unconventional I guess you could say and it's something that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time but just I'm not really found the time or I just felt like it wasn't appropriate or you know whatever it may be but my channel has just become a miscellaneous I do some videos with my nieces I do some videos with Jack I do videos um, about makeup and also some talking videos so this is gonna be one of those talking videos but before we get into that video make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and hit that notification bell that will be right here that way you are notified every time I post a video so you won't miss out but Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. So as you see by the title, this is going to be a video about things I wish I knew as a young woman and slash young adult. I feel like, or a young teenager, I guess you could say. When you start your period, I feel like that's your transition into womanhood. And most people start early, so 12, 13. I was personally about 12 years old. I was in, no, actually, I was... In, yeah, I think it was 12. I was in middle school and I started at church, coincidentally enough. <laughs> and I just had no idea about it. And my family, we're just not the family that talks about like feminine hygiene and things like that. Of course, you know, take your baths, take your showers, you know, things of that sort. Make sure you don't you know smell or anything like that but they didn't actually talk about what actually goes into keeping your vagina clean so I wanted to let some girls know you know if you don't have a mother or you live with your grandma like I did and you know their ways are a little bit older and just not you know not all together then I hope this video helps you so let's go ahead and get into the first thing so the first thing that I feel like every girl doesn't know is that a vagina has a smell. Vaginas naturally have their own smells and depending on what you eat and what you intake because everything comes through the mouth, through the digestive system and out of the bottom region, <laughs> either your butt or your, or, or your vagina, not your vagina, but your, um, your urethra, so where you pee from, it comes out of there. So it's gonna have a natural smell if you eat more garlicky or more fried foods or things like that, but it's okay for your vagina to have a natural smell. And as you get older and as you become more comfortable with your vagina, you understand what your smell is and what it smells okay and natural and what is a little bit off and it's like, okay, something's going on right there. So number two is one thing that I personally had to learn growing up and that is that Bath and Body Works and smell good stuff like um, caress and like those frag really heavy fragrance smelling body washes are not okay specifically back and body works because we as girls we love to smell good and fresh and clean and floral and apple and whatever it may be your vagina is not going to smell like that and that should not go down there so you just want to make sure that you're using a um, pH balance soap Personally, I like to use Dove. I use the Dove Original Soap, and I like to use that just to clean, not inside the vagina, but just to clean down there because everything gets dirty. So you want to make sure that you're cleaning it, but you don't want to go inside of the vagina. There's a there's your outer perimeter of your vagina, so your labia and all of that stuff, like your lips and your, um, your clit and all of that stuff, that is the outer part. And then there's the actual vagina canal, so that's where you'll push out a baby eventually if you have a baby. That's the interior part and that's the actual vagina you don't want to go in there that's bad if you go in there it'll it'll be bad trust me <laughs> so number three is about men and boys so men know absolutely nothing about vaginas and some may know some but they don't know anything and when they tell you like your vagina should smell like roses and flowers it's like what? Like that that's just that's just stupid. Don't let anyone ever make you feel self-conscious about the way that your vagina is or looks or smells or anything like that. Don't listen to boys, especially if they're 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 like they have not the slightest idea. And at that age and at that state Everyone's pretty much learning about their own selves, how to keep their body odor together, how, you know, what this is and how to work with this and how to do that. Everyone's still learning, so you shouldn't be taking tips from someone who's learning the same things as you are. So don't worry about boys or even men if you're older because they don't know and they shouldn't be telling you that your vagina should smell a certain way because they don't have one, you know? <laughs> So number four is um, more so of a personal opinion, and that's about like St. Ives or Summer's Eve, all of those vagina washes. 
they don't work for me. They, no, 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 no. They threw off my pH balance, and I know they say pH balance, but they don't work for me. They don't do it, no. I don't use them. I never recommend them to, recommend them to anyone. You don't want to use those. They're just... They just suck, okay? They just suck. And they're expensive. They're expensive as hell. They're like seven or eight bucks for a bottle of, of vagina body wash and it just sometimes, I don't know, just threw, it threw off my pH balance. It just didn't do anything to, for me at least. Number five should be a pretty common one and that's about cotton underwear. Cotton underwear are, are going to allow the vagina to actually breathe. And a lot of brands sell cotton underwear and they're not even made as ugly as they used to be made. I, I like, my personal favorites are my, um, um, uh, fruit, not the Fruit of the Looms, the Hanes for women. Like, I like those. And I think I do have some Fruit of the Looms. I, I don't remember exactly if it's Fruit of the Looms, but you know, the ones that you get at like Kmart or Walmart, you know, just, I like the big granny panties because I have a lot of ass. So, you know, when I'm wearing like cotton underwear, I like to use those. Victoria's Secret also has some if you want some a little bit cuter and a little bit more sexy, so to speak. They're gonna have, you know, cotton underwear is gonna allow your vagina to actually breathe and get air into it because you need to let that breathe. And that takes me into point number six is letting your vagina breathe. And I know that when I was younger, I never slept without underwear or even a bra. I always slept in a bra and I always slept in underwear. And I think it was just more so of not feeling comfortable in myself and with my body parts to feel like I'm okay to be let loose. But as I've gotten older, especially after about my freshman year of college, I started sleeping with no underwear and bras also. It just releases everything. It just allows, like I said, that air to just air everything out. It's okay it, and you should sleep with no underwear at least two to three times a week. I do it pretty much every day. I'll put on a night, like a long nighty, like a t -sh like a long t-shirt nighty thing or a t-shirt or look pajama shirt or something like that and I just won't have any bra on or no panties on and after a little bit you'll feel more comfortable of course if you live with like brothers or um, a, a dad or anything like that I usually put on like boxer shorts so like um, like some of Jack's boxer shorts or some women's boxer shorts and then once I get into my bedroom or in this case I live with Jack's so it doesn't really matter but when you get into your bedroom that's when you can you know strip off and let everything breathe but even if you're using boxer shorts no underwear on under that under that and it'll allow it everything to breathe. So number seven is about discharge and discharge can be a little, uh, it can be, it can be really weird because naturally your body will di discharge but when something is wrong it will be different. So when something's wrong with your body and your vagina specifically it'll discharge either thick or mucousy so like when you blow your nose where it's that thick kind of greeny mu mucousy if it's discolored at all there is something wrong. You have to see your gynecologist or your nurse practitioner or your doctor or whomever that you go to. You have to see someone if it's if it's discolored because that means that you might have some type of problem, whether it's cervical or um, um, like a uh, like a, a venereal disease or something like that. You never know. So when it's not like like a thin kind of like. I don't want to say like a thin mucus, but it should be clear and like thin, and that means that everything is okay, discharge is okay, and it won't have a smell, but if it has a smell, like I said, something is going wrong. And that's what I mean when I say that you will learn how your body works and how your body is, because I know, and I haven't had a yeast infection in a long, long time, since I was in high school, but I know when my regular discharge is, or when I'm even starting my period, my discharge will start to be a little bit like thicker and like, I guess you say when I'm ovulating or getting closer to my period, it'll get a little thicker. And then, you know, when I'm getting yeast infection, it'll be thicker, um, milky, like it'll just be different. And I know, and it has a little smell, and I know that it's time for me to go get a monostat or something like that. And as I got older, I, I learned to self, I don't want to say like self-medicate, but about my senior year of high school, I was getting yeast infections for a long time. I played a lot of sports. And this will take me into, um, Oh, that was actually that was actually my tenth fact. But this will take me into my tenth fact. I have a couple more in between. But 
as I was, and when I was in high school, I had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of yeast infections. I played volleyball, I played softball, and I also cheered. So when I cheered, I was wearing the little bloomers. They were tight, they were constricting, and then you know, wear your underwear, or your thong, or whatever. And I was getting yeast infections. In volleyball, you wear spandex, and then you wear a thong, so that way you can't see the panty line and your spandex and everything like that. And that was just fabric on top of fabric on top of fabric and all three were really really tight well in that case both were really really tight right up against my vagina like this and no air was like a blockage nothing was getting in between so that naturally just caused me to get a yeast infection in my family the women in my family our vaginas are very 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 sensitive so just one little small thing would just tip it off and there you go have a yeast infection or um, bacteria vaginosis or whatever so at some point, I decided to just start going to Walmart or Target or whatever and getting like a monostat one a day. So expensive. They're like $20 and back then I didn't have the money. So it was just so expensive. So I just learned, like I said, to watch my body, watch what was coming out of my body and then be able to, you know, see the signs, check them out and then get a monostat and then be able to self-medicate as opposed to going to a doctor and sitting there forever. And just for them to take a little scrape of your vagina, sticking that thing up there and then saying, oh, you just have a yeast infection. Like, it was just too much. And I don't like going to the gynecologist. Now I am 23. So, wait, yes, I did just turn 23. <laughs> I'm 23, so I only go once a year. But when you're a little younger, you want to make sure you go often. So that way you're getting checked up, especially if you're switching partners. I've only ever had one partner, and that's Jack. So I was okay with that. But if you have multiple partners, you want to get yourself checked out at least every single time you switch partners. Because you don't want anything to go bad with your vagina. Your vagina is sacred. Like, it's just, it's good, you know? <laughs> so number eight is also something that my freshman year of high school was when it became a little bit more um, popular, I guess you could say, and that's shaving. So my family, none of the women shave in my family. My grandma, my mom, my aunt, none of them shave. And when I was in high school, so I never shaved. I just, you know, took scissors and trimmed it really low. And when I was in high school, I had a really good friend named Tiara. Um, she was telling me, she's like, you haven't shaved? You know, you never shaved? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, no, like, you know, why? And she's like, guys, like it when you shave. You know, you should keep it bare. And that causes hair bumps out the ass. I can't tell you how many ingrown hair bumps I've had or just hair bumps in general and discoloration along the sides of my thighs that I've had from shaving. And and I shaved for at least three. No, I shaved for. Oh my gosh, we will be, we will be together eight years. So I've shaved for about seven years being with Jet. No, about six and a half years being with Jet. Just recently, when we moved in together, I stopped shaving. But I don't get it waxed either. But if you can afford to get it waxed when you're a little younger get it waxed even now get it waxed if you can but my best friend gets hers waxed and she loves it but I've been with Jack like I said for almost eight years and I'm just at the point where I just keep it I get like a it has a shaver and a, and a trimmer on one side and the other and I just use that and I just keep it low I've been with him for a while he knows how it is he knows what it is and you know that's just he's comfortable and I'm comfortable just because I hate getting hair bumps and I have such a low pain tolerance that getting it waxed I feel like I would just pass out and maybe one day I'll get it waxed and maybe vlog it for you guys but right now I'm comfortable with just keeping it low and don't feel like if you're about to start you know having sex with someone that you feel like you need to shave it or keep it low or anything like that if a guy wants to have sex with you he will have sex with you he doesn't care about what your toes look like your nails look like you know all of that as long as it smells nice and you know there's nothing going on down there it'll be fine if you just trim it low you can even cut off the sides and just leave a landing strip if you want to. You know, whatever you want to do, you can just, you know, treat it like a haircut. Do different designs if you want to. But you don't want to shave continuously and get hair bumps. They just, they don't look nice and they just are painful. So the ninth and final, I had a notebook, the ninth and final tip and trick and something that I learned over the years is about douching. As I mentioned, I live with my grandma. My grandma is 62 years old now. She'll be 63 in this next coming year. And she douched. That was just what she did. She just, she douched. Um, my mom douched. Everyone douched in my family. And it wasn't until I was in high school and when I first started having sex with Jeff that um, my nurse practitioner told me that you shouldn't douche. And I was so taken aback because it was such a norm within my family. And I feel like most women in the older community to do. 
But what it actually does is, yes, it takes out all of the bad stuff, but it also takes out all of the good stuff. And like I mentioned before, your vagina is a self-cleansing machine. It cleans everything out. There's nothing you need to do up in that vagina. It will take care of itself and it'll flush itself out. But if you douche, you're gonna flush all the good and all of the bad out and it's just gonna be, it's just not, it's just not gonna be good. You know what I mean? It's just not gonna be good. So you want to make sure that you're not douching, you're not putting anything up in your vagina besides a tampon and a penis if, if you are at that age. If not, you know, nothing but a tampon if you like to use tampons in a pad. And if not, then you don't need to put anything up there. It will clean, cleanse itself out. So I hope that you guys found some of these tips and tricks helpful. I'm sure a lot of my subscribers are of age and you guys probably already know these and if you know even more than what I mentioned just besides the 10 then leave some down below so that way if there are some younger girls that see this video they will know what to look out for and what to know and things of that sort if I miss anything please leave it down below leave me your suggestions your comments whatever it may be like I said I use Dove soap all over besides inside of my vagina and I have had no problems no yeast infections no bacterial vaginosis no nothing and that has just changed my life personally because I could not control, I don't want to say like the smell of my vagina, but I could not control, like it just did not not have a smell, you know what I mean? And so I finally found something that works for me, so you know, let me know what your thoughts and comments and everything like that are down below. I love you all, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video!